Good morning guys, welcome to It's Alive Podcast, Ben here. Now, um, again it was Friday the 13th last night here in New Zealand, so I just want to talk about a film I watched last night, which was Friday the 13th Part 8, Jason Takes Manhattan. Now this thing I saw as a kid, I probably would have been about 13 I think, when I first saw this film, when I had the time I was like, wow this is amazing, look at that, Jason's on a boat and now they're in, now they're in New York and... No, no, he takes his face off and there's a skeleton, weird screaming skeleton underneath. I thought, wow, that's amazing. Watched it again last night and, you know, I love those movies. I love all those sort of 80s slasher horror movies. But it's funny that, you know, now watching it when I'm like 30, um, 31 now, 32 in November, um, I, you can see all the, you know, the glaring mistakes and just, there were bits of that just seemed like it, they shouldn't be funny, but you laughed anyway. Um, so, spoiler alert, um, I'm going to ruin this movie now um, for you. If you haven't seen it, go watch it. Seriously, just skip ahead of this a little bit um, to something else. Don't ruin it for yourself, but if you have seen it, you'll know what I'm about to say. Um, there's a part where Jason is walking through the middle of Times Square and he kicks a radio that some punks are listening to, and they sort of come after him with switchblades, you know, we're going to mess you up. And Jason turns around. You can't see. You see the back of Jason's head. He lifts up his mask like this. And just looks at them. And puts his mask back down. They're all like, nah man, it's cool. It's cool. And I just, I, I don't know. I look at that going, why would Jason do that? Why would, like, you know, Jason Voorhees, wouldn't he just slash and hack and destroy? But, you know, that was kind of funny. Also at the very end, when, um, when Renee and Sean are climbing up the ladder trying to get out of the sewer before the toxic waste kills them. Um, you know, Jason's in the water, you know, screaming, you know, his mask has come off, of course, at this point. It doesn't come off the entire rest of the movie, apart from that one part, and now it slips off. Go figure. Um, and he's looking up at them with his skeleton face going, Aah! I just looked at that and thought, wait, what? Like, why is he, why is Jason Voorhees screaming like, you know, granted it's toxic waste burning you from the inside, but fair enough. But, you know, it just, I don't know, it just doesn't seem very jason a very Jason way to go. Um, apart from that, well, it wasn't the worst movie I've ever seen, but it is, you know, there's definitely glaring holes in it when you watch it a little bit later in life and can sort of sit there and pick out things. And I did feel sorry for Wayne. If you've watched the movie and you know, and you know the character of Wayne, um, I feel sorry for the guy. He was just trying to, you know, I mean, he was, he was trying to get some love. Let's just put it, let's just put it politely and put it that way. But he doesn't end up, you know, he has, you know, the rocker chick at the beginning who clearly likes the guy. But he's going after the high school, the, what is it, the prom, prom queen? Yes, the prom queen, um, ch cheerleader, yes, cheerleader, prom queen type. And, you know, he has the rocker chick he could be with, but he tries to go after the prom queen. You know, you got, I mean, you feel sorry for the guy when he gets killed anyway, let's just put it that way. He doesn't get killed in the most politest fashions. I just heard something fall over, what was that? Is it Jason? It's not Jason Voorhees? Fantastic. So Jason's not coming to kill me now. Um, and if you're a fan of the band Marauder, um, there is a guy who looks exactly like their guitar player, Pito, um, which I saw that and just stopped and went, oh my god, that's amazing. So I had to get the iPad out, looked at, looked him up, and I thought, like, okay, it's not that guy. But seriously, watch it. If you like Marauder, or if you know any of the guys in Marauder, you'll know exactly who I'm talking about. Uh, one of his friends has already picked it up when I put it up on Facebook last night. Uh, he picked it up and knew the exact scene. So it's just to tell you the scene, it's the scene where they first get into New York City, two punks come up and they try and kidnap Renee, and they take her off. One of the guys looks like him. So have a look at it, find it, tweet me if you tweet me if you know it, or you know, and yeah, it's that was just really funny. Um, so yeah, Friday the Thirteenth, Part Eight. Someone is dumping bottles outside my house. Please stop right now. Thank you. Um, yes, Friday the Thirteenth, Part Eight. Stop dumping bottles outside my house, and it was pretty good. For a Friday the 13th movie, it was pretty fun and enjoyable to watch. A bit of a laugh, really. Alright, now we're going to talk about some music for this week. Now, I've got two records for you. One main record I want to talk about for a little while, and then one that I just saw when I was pulling the first record out and thought, oh my god, I have to tell people about this. Now, of course, both these records, um, I will have pictures of their covers up on my Instagram page, so I'll put the link down below for that. Um, so definitely check that out because it'll be a little bit easier than sort of me just flashing these things up in front of you. So the first one I want to show you is this. This is uh, the reissue of The Misfits Project 1950. Now, 
This originally came out in 2004. Um, it came on, it was on vinyl, and there was also a CD DVD version as well. Um, I had that, I had the CD DVD version back then, which I think I bought when I was in in New York in, would have been about 2005, so probably a year after it came out, I got that. Um, and the DVD has a bunch of live footage of Misfits doing various songs from the album. Um, it's got some absolute cracking tracks on it. Uh, my favourite one will always probably have to be the, monster, the Misfits doing the Monster Mash, which seems like it was just written for them. Um, this version here, this reissue um, of Project 1950, which if I can get my hand off it, there we go, um, also has three bonus tracks. It is a song Witchcraft, really good. Daughter of Darkness, which I'm not a huge fan of the song, but this is pretty, you know, Jerry and, Co Jerry and company do a pretty damn good job. And also You're the Devil in Disguise, which is pretty awesome as well. Um, this particular version, which if I can put this record down, there we are. This one comes in a very snazzy slipcase. Has the little booklet. Now this, this what's on the back here, what you're looking at now, this was on the CD and as a booklet on the inside. So it pretty much has the DNA of rock and roll. It sort of shows you how various pop songs, rock and roll songs break down. It's actually pretty good information. I actually took a guitar and actually played along with some of this stuff and started writing stuff just random, just, just to see if it would work based around Jerry's notes. And they are actually, it's pure gold. You really, it really does show you how like DNA for rock and roll breaks down. Now, the coolest thing about this is, and I was so very happy I got this, was the color of this vinyl is some kind of, uh, I think they called it fluorescent, you know, fluorescent green. I like to call it um, reanimator liquid green. If you ever see the movie Reanimator, it kind of looks like the liquid that was in that. This, uh, yeah, it's just, it's one of my favorite covers album, album, albums. Sounds funny saying album when it's only one, albums when it's only one, but there you go. So, Misfits, Project 1950, you can still get this. Um, I'm not sure how many of these vinyls they've still got, they've got left anymore, um, but you can still get it. Definitely buy it. They've definitely they've done it on CD as well with extended packaging um, and new artwork inside the CD as well, which I must get at some point. Even I have this on the original on CD. I have this version now. I also got this. Uh, I got the download of this as well. So I have your you know most conceivable formats of this. If they did it on cassette, I probably would have bought that as well because I think cassettes should make a comeback and they're awesome. Now, second thing I want to tell you about, this is a record that, a um, little bit of background, I used to work for a CD and DVD store in Auckland. Um, I worked in the New Market store for a while and then when one of the ladies who was working there got a took a job at their head office, I moved into the Vulcan Lane store, which if anyone knows Auckland, Vol the Vulcan Lane store is where the Mac Pack is in Vulcan Lane now. Um, there was a little CD and DVD store under there. Now, my boss there, uh, Mark Campbell, would play me all kinds of interesting stuff. Some stuff I've, I've never heard of. I thought, dude, why am I listening to this? But it was all pure gold. There's pr I don't remember there was much that he showed me that I didn't like. Plus, we would sit around and watch Kung Fu movies most days while listening to uh, listening to interesting me. So it was a good job education-wise. Now, this is a record that I heard the first time, fell in love with, loved it. Um, it's a re-release of... Um, I'm just going to show you now, and I hope that it's not too glary. If it is a bit glary, go to my Instagram, it's underscore alive underscore podcast. There'll be a good picture of this on there. This is Coming From Reality uh, from Rodriguez. Rodriguez, if you've ever seen the film Searching for Sugar Man, this is the guy they're talking about. Um, this was re-released in 2009 by the Light in the Attic Records label. Um, long, much long out of print. Um... It came, originally came out in 1971, so it's been that long awaiting a re-release. Um, it is, not to be rude, but it is, and please pardon my French, but it is fucking amazing. Um, it is just perfect, the whole record is just perfect. Um, yeah, I don't know what to say about this record other than it's absolutely amazing. Um, if you're not sure about purchasing something like this and you think, oh, I want to hear a song first, look up the songs, climb up on my music, and a most disgusting song. Both absolute pure gold, and I love them both. And this record, um, I'm very happy to have on vinyl. Um, yeah, it's not everyone's cup of tea, I don't think. It's sort of a dylan esque sort of, I don't know, psychedelic -y Mexican Dylan. I th would you say that? Yeah, I mean, it's sort of a psychedelic Mexican Dylan. Um, and that's how I describe it. Bob Dylan, of course. Um, 
and it's just great. It's just it's a really good record, easy listening stuff, but it's it's got some interesting bits to it too. So, in summation, it's the same as like it's a university project or a speech. Project 1950 by the Misfits, coming from reality by Rodriguez. Check him out. Also on the subject of Rodriguez, Rodriguez, Rodriguez. There we go. Also check out the film Searching for Sugar Man and its accompanying soundtrack. That's pretty damn good as well. Uh, also, here's another album called Cold Fact, which wasn't my favourite album, but it's pretty damn good as well. Alright, so now we're going to talk about the uh, sign stuff this week. Uh, now, the first thing I want to show you is this. Now, this is a picture of my, my good self and Matt Heafy from the band Trivium. Now, this um, I got signed a few years ago when Trivium were here in New Zealand playing at the power station. Uh, the photo was taken, I think, the day before the show, and then I had it printed out. So I was going to get the photo, the actual photo printed, but didn't have time to go and actually do that. So I just printed off my home uh, home printer in colour, and Matt uh, Matt was nice enough to sign this after the show. Now the cool thing is, if you look really carefully, and I'll put a photo of this up on Instagram for you as well. And if you look right there, there is one of their techs in the background going. Um, who was hanging around as well. That was kind of funny. I didn't probably didn't realize this for a good few weeks and after I'd taken that photo That that was actually there Now second thing I want to talk about today now This is probably one of my absolute most favorite sign things and again photo on Instagram of course link down below Is this right here now? This is the, um, the booklet that came with the special edition of the Lord of the Rings 2 Towers DVDs now this was the special editions that came out after the movies, and it had um, had your figurine, it had the bonus two bonus DVDs of, um, of bonus footage, documentaries, um, and had all the cool commentaries on as well. Um, I'm just trying to. It's years. It's, I really should have written this down when I first had this done, but I'm just trying to remember who actually signed. I know Vigo Mortensen was there, Elijah Wood signed it, Billy Boyd, uh, Bernard Hill, Dominic Monaghan. Um, Liv Tyler, who was absolutely wonderful. Uh, Howard Shaw. Now, the Howard Shaw signature was this one here. Um, was done at a signing he was doing um, of you know for the soundtracks, and I happened to spot him. Um, and also we have uh, one of my favourites as well, who um, is Mr. John Noble right there. Now, John Noble, you might have seen if you're watching the show Sleepy Hollow. Uh, it's just finished up its second season. Um, if you haven't seen it, I'm not going to ruin it for you. Go and check it out, it's amazing, John Noble pays a character that you, mm, it's a surprising character, I don't want to ruin it, but it's he's very good. Now he played um, Lord Denethor in the Lord of the Rings films, and he was awesome. Him, um, quick story about that, he I met at um, the day, sorry it was not at, the day of the premiere for The Return of the King, I was uh, wandering past a hotel, saw some people standing around, went over and see what was going on. Um, people were saying, oh, you know, some people from Lord of the Rings are coming out, and I hung around. That's how I got most of this signed. Actually, is that how I got everything on here signed? Apart from the Howard Shaw one, he was doing a signing, which I've just come from. Um, John Noble had wandered off. You know, I was just walk walking, uh, walking away, doing something before we went down to that premiere, and I said to a lady who said, oh, John Noble's here, and I said, oh, well, have you seen him? And she pointed off in the direction and said, he's off that way. Went and said hello to him, um, and yeah, he was really nice enough to sign um, sign my booklet for me. Um, I the scene that there's a scene in a special edition scene in here called Sons of the Steward, um, scene 41, I do believe, if I remember correctly. Let's do the reading right now. Yep, scene 41, part two, scene 41, Sons of the Steward. Um, is the little bit that I was in in the Two Towers. One of my probably my best days of work. Most favourite things I've ever done was doing that. So it was really cool to meet John Noble, who I was in this scene with for about half a second. The next item on the on the agenda to today is, and I'm not going to drop the CD out of it like I almost did before. It is this right here? Now this is the special edition, uh, two disc uh, book edition of Semper Eternal by Bring Me the Horizon. Now this I got signed at a signing, it was, I believe it was last year, uh, JB Hi-Fi on Queen Street here in Auckland, they were doing a signing, I thought, well, yeah, it'd be cool to hear that sign. Um, I quite enjoy this album. Um, Semper Eternal is, some, is an album that I think surprised a lot of people. Um, a lot of people, I, I'm not sure, really knowing what to expect from Bring Me the Horizon. Um, it kind of has a sort of a Thursday feel, 
with a bit of sort of an experimental Radiohead vibe, but is still quite heavy at the same time. So definitely check that out. If you've never heard of Bring Me The Horizon before, start with that album. It's amazing. If you have and you weren't really sure of it, I say go back and check it out again. Now, last thing on the sign box today is this cover right here. Now this is a cover to uh, Volume 3, The Subliminal Verses by Slipknot. Um, and this I had signed at Big Day Out, I believe it was 2004. This is the cover here. Again, I'll have a photo up on Instagram if you want to have a closer look at it. This one was signed by uh, Chris Fenn, number three. Apparently that's two. There you go, number three. Uh, Paul Gray, number two. Clown, six. And Joey Jordison, number one. Um, it was really cool. I was, I'd heard that they were going to be doing a signing at the Big Down. I thought I have to be there to see, have to be there to see that. Uh, it was show, and it was cool to meet Paul Gray. Um, you know, it was a very sad time when he passed away for obviously his friend, his friends and family, and also fans as well. Um, but it was cool to say I've actually, you know, met someone who is who was that much of a huge part of a band like that. So that was really cool. Now, one last couple of things I do want to talk about is because I have to go and make my breakfast now. And with breakfast today, it's going to be a, uh, what are we having today? What are we having? St uh, not steak, uh, eggs, bacon, eggs and bacon and toast. And someone is now mowing their lawn outside, so I really hope you can hear me, is this beautiful tea right here. Now, I'll take a photo of this, of course, as well. I have it up on the Instagram and Twitter. This is the Skinny Mini Tea by Bluebird Tea Mixologists. Bluebird Tea Company Mixologists, that would be the better way of saying that. Um, this stuff is great. If you're having a, uh, quite a, a fried breakfast, with a heavy breakfast like that, this is an amazing tea to have with it. Now, I'm not much of a tea drinker myself, as people who know me would know, but this stuff is amazing. It's a very calming, sort of an energizing tea, but it also calms the stomach as well. So you're having some food like that, really amazing tea to have it. So is it, once again, Skinny Mini Tea by Bluebird Tea Company. Definitely check them out. Um, they ship worldwide. Um, prices are really good. This little packet here, which is how big, Benjamin? Do -do 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 -do. 20 grams, I think. It'll make about 10 cups of tea. Absolutely fantastic. It is, it smells quite aniseedy when you smell it in packet, but when you actually brew it, it's actually not as strong as you would think. Now, one last thing I want to talk about, and I don't know if I'll have time to do all of these today, but we will talk about guitar picks. Now, this is something I want to do, I probably will do in depth more one day, but I'll show you a couple of cool things I've got here. This is, um, oh, this is one of my favorite guitar picks. That's not it. Get out of there. Out of there, you. This is here. Now, I'll try and take a photo of this to put it up on Instagram, and I really hope you can see that. There's a pick I got from, uh, from a friend of mine, Ross McDougall, who plays guitar for the band Saving Grace. Now, I got this, I think, and Ross can probably, if you're watching this, can probably correct me if I'm wrong. I think I got these back when Ross was playing guitar for In Dread Response. It may also have been a Melissa Episcopate at the same time, I think is when I got these. Um, Ross gave me a bunch of these, which is really cool. He's also given me um, a few other, another one of his pick designs, which is this one here, little pink one, nice, nice and colorful. Um, I've got picks from, from quite a few guys. Um, Vasili from Saving Grace was, um, was nice enough to give me a bunch of his picks on my birthday back when the Saving Grace album The King Is Coming came out and I was just, yeah, I was, it was awesome. Um, they're one of my favourite New Zealand bands, one of my favourite bands in general um, and it was really cool to get some from that, um, some picks from them. I also have a pick and I have to find this because it's just absolutely bloody hilarious. So we will find it or I'll just keep talking like this. By the way, let me know if I should stop singing. Here it is, this is gold. Um, this I didn't actually get from the person in question whose pick it is. I got it from my friend Steve, who plays bass for Indrid Response and City of Souls as well. I think it's City of Souls, God. If I get that wrong, someone tell me. If you can see this, and again, I'll get a photo of it as well. It's a pick from uh, George White, the bass player from Saving Grace. And it's a picture of George Costanza on a guitar pick, which is amazing. They use in tune guitar picks which I've used because they've given me I have enough of these that I can use a few of them to actually play. These picks are amazing. They are similar in feel to your Dunlop um, Tortex picks but they just they have a different a slightly different feel to them um, and they're really amazing to play with. 
I have, um, and I'll do some more uh, pick videos uh, possibly next week. If I remember to do one next week, I will do that. Um, I'll actually be away next Saturday, so hopefully I'll have a video film during the week for you guys, um, which my lovely wife will uh, post up for you. But that's about all I've got time for today. I hope you guys have an amazing week. Um, I hope I can keep my arms from doing this all the time. Um, and hope you have an amazing week. Um, if you're on... if What am I trying to talk about now? Brain? Huh? Nobody? Anybody. Um, if you're on PlayStation Network, try the game uh, Tony Hawk... Oh, what the hell was it called? The Tony Hawk game on PlayStation Network that you can download that my brother-in-law uh, downloaded and showed me the other day. It's freaking amazing. You can play as James Hetfield and Rob Rob Trujillo from Metallica. Definitely get that. I'll put a link down below to what it is actually called. I'm really sorry I stuffed up on the name of it. But anyway, have a great week. I must know now. No now. No now. I must know now. Go and make my breakfast. No now. So I'll see you guys next week. Bye.